they're in the boat. They've been on that boat for about nine hours. It says they went out before sunset, and it was in the third watch that he came. On that sea of Galilee, that 13 by 7 playing board, and the, the clouds rolled in, and they've been out there for nine hours, and they're bailing water, and they're pulling the sails, and they're bailing water, and they're pulling the sails, and that water is crashing over the hull of that thing, and they're probably shouting at each other, and they might even be shouting out at Jesus. Why did you send us out here in the middle of a storm? What were you thinking? And what did Jesus do? Jesus followed them into their storm. He followed them right into the storm. And what did Peter do? Peter didn't set out that night to become the first human to walk on water. I think at that point, Peter was sitting in the boat going, okay, this sucks. I want to be with him. <laughs> Safest place on Galilee right now is with, with the carpenter. Jesus, can you call a brother out? <laughs> Jesus will follow you into your storm. I don't care what your storm looks like. I don't care what your friend's storms look like. I don't care what those people you're trying to evangelize and reach out to. I don't care what their storms look like. People have to kind of come to a really hard understanding, and that is that the suburban gospel is not going to do it. A lot of people are functioning under the suburban gospel. As long as I'm really, really good, God will bless me. As if I'm really bad, he's going to smite me, so I just have to be really good. Can you explain the Ten Commandments so I can bend them just enough to not get smitted, smoted, smited, smoten? And that's why you as missionaries, that's why you are so vital. Because when the storms of your life come, and they will, and the water starts crashing over your hull, and you're bailing water, and you're pulling the sails, and it seems like you've been bailing the water and pulling the sails for months or even years, and people keep looking at you and saying, what is your deal? How can you still go to Mass? How can you still pray? How can you still follow Jesus? How can you still have a smile on your face? And they will. If you're living the saintly life, they will. And Peter tells you in 1 Peter, be prepared. Be prepared when people come to you and they want to know the reason for your hope. That is presupposing that when the bad times come, that you're still singing psalms. You're singing the songs of praise. That when the bad time comes, you're still focused on God. You're still listening for the applause of heaven, not the applause of earth. And they're going to come. And God's going to follow you right into your storm.